Hello, hello, everyone. This is Amanda Grace here with you today. Uh, we have cable. Praise the Lord. After we all we've been through, we have cable today. Praise the Lord. It was installed today. This is why you're seeing me clearly and hearing me clearly. So from this point on, this is how it's going to be. So we praise the Lord. And the technician was so great. And our, our security tech guy was wonderful too, Jim, and got it done today. So hallelujah. We're rolling now. Thank you for every to everyone who stuck with us through the bit of funniness and fuzziness and other things that went on with this. But praise God, praise God, we have a uh, cable and it's clear and we are in a very high speed connection now. So we give God all the glory for that. Okay, so uh, we were on with Andrew Sorcini before. That's a separate video for good reason, because that is a totally separate topic and it needs to be separate from when I'm dealing uh, with a word from the Lord here. So I'm going to put on my tallit. I have got Chet and Grace out. Um, I'm hoping they stay nice and quiet. Chet has been nice and happy since he's been out. He's actually right whoop there there's chet grace is walking to my my left you would see it as my right but it's my left uh and there she is so yep chet and grace are with us um i'm hoping to bring molly the african gray parrot and wally up here and on with me for an upcoming episode and uh so we're getting started today is november 10th 2022 i am going to open up in prayer we're dealing with a very uh powerful, poignant word from the Lord that I think a lot of you need right now. We're going to talk about what's going on, what has happened. Um, so let's just open up in prayer first, turn it over to the Lord and begin. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come before you. We praise you. You are almighty God. You are far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your name. Father, we humble ourselves before you this day, Father God, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives. So you, your will, and your power in the name of Jesus Christ becomes more in our lives. Father, we acknowledge you sent your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to the earth, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the sacrifice for our sins the Passover lamb. He died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his blood. He redeemed us that day, Father God, at Calvary. He victoriously rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven, took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore. And we declare that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we honor that sacrifice before you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill this place, to fill this room in this broadcast, Father God that you would send your holy angels and heavenly hosts of all rankings and divisions, Father God, to surround and protect us, Father God, to minister, Lord, um, to strike down the workers of darkness and iniquity, Father God, in Jesus' name, that, that the enemy would attempt to try to send. Father God, we just praise you, Lord. We bless your holy name. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus' name. Father, allow us the humble privilege of being vessels of your power, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority right now and command every plot scheme, contract, assignment, attempt, communication, weaponry, blueprint, attack, strategy, sabotage, hindrance, interference, violence, slander, intimidation, bullying, threat, and the like that the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, familiar spirits, puppets, and agents of the enemy, wicked people, Father God, corrupt people, Father God, would attempt to form against us, this ministry, Lord, the animal sanctuary, in the name of Jesus Christ, we command, be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, thwarted, disrupted, blocked, nullified, voided, disarmed, dismantled, canceled, destroyed. Bound in the name of Jesus Christ and cast back to the dry places and pits in which it came from to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return or have anything sent in its place. Father, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are merely the clay. You sit on the highest throne, Father God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Without your breath of life in us, we don't have life, Lord. We give you all the praise today in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wanted to make... Um, this announcement before we got into the word, starting this Monday, 
November 17th at 7 p.m. We will be starting on Ark of Grace, Grace Out Loud with myself and Marty Grisham from Loudmouth Prayer. It is going to be a bi-weekly broadcast, so once every two weeks it will be on. So it, 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 during that week, one of the broadcasts I do will be Grace Out Loud. We are going to really get into the meat of the word and teaching people how to effectively pray, which is something that we really need in the body of Christ right now. So we are looking very forward to it. It is going uh, to be this Monday, November 17th. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Marty can be very funny too. So this is going to be not only incredibly helpful to learn, but it probably will be quite entertaining. Uh, it is on Ark of Grace. So Grace Out Loud is just going to be a broadcast that we do bi-weekly on Ark of Grace. So it's on the same channel here. Uh, it's just the intro for Grace Out Loud will be played after our intro bi-weekly when we do that broadcast. Uh, so look for that. We're looking very forward to doing that. Uh, it's something that's really needed right now. And the two of us can really get into the meat of the word. Hold on one second. I'm going to tell you because I've been advertising the, se the 17th and I'm realizing that it's not, oh my goodness gracious. It's not the 17th. Oh, Monday, November 14th. I'm sorry. Monday is correct. It's November 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep, it's the 14th. So I'm sorry, it is the 14th. We will be announcing it. Um, so I'm making the correction now. Monday, November 14th is going to be the first episode of Grace Out Loud. So that's that on that front. Now... I know. Isn't that funny? It's like I'm saying one day and giving the other date. So it's it's been a day. Uh, Chris is outside right now blowing leaves. Um, Gus from Blessed to Teach is here helping him. And oh, my, my, my. Chris has leaves everywhere in his hair, on his shirt. Uh, so he's been that's what he's been doing today. Chris has been blowing leaves. And uh, it's been a very unusually warm day in New York. And I hope it stays this way for a little while longer until we get into the, you know, colder weather. So let's get into the word. And then I'm going to talk about after I read the word, what is happening and what I see going on right now in the nation. Okay. Okay. Wow, 66 in Buffalo, that is unusual weather because Buffalo usually gets colder first because they're about five hours north of us or so. Okay, yep, warm in Connecticut, warm in the Northeast. It's just been unusually warm. Okay, so let's get into the word. I'm going to read it to you. This is going to go up on the blog. Ark, well, it's really Amanda Grace. It. Ark of Grace Ministries website will have a link to it. But if you go to Amanda Grace, the number four him, H I M dot blogspot.com. So Amanda Grace, the number four him, H I M dot blogspot.com. This word will be up there along with all of our teachings uh, and the outlines, I believe, from Grace Out Loud, we will be able to put up there too. So. Here we go. We ready? Because this is a very poignant word for this time right now. It says, praise be to the Lord of hosts, most high. By the way, it came in today, November 10th, 2022, at about 8 a.m. I had been up since 630 about in prayer. Probably I went into prayer about 645 or so. I started reading the word and going into prayer. So November 10th, 2022, 8 a.m. Praise be to the Lord of hosts, most high, who rules from a throne of righteousness, who is perfect and holy in all, that's capitalized, of his ways. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And to his kingdom, there is no end. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, the breach, breach is capitalized, in your nation has just begun to turn says the Lord. So it's only beginning to turn. 
The breach has blocked the nation from a complete turn and birthing what I, the Lord, have spoken forth. So that is all in capitals as well. However, that's capitalized, says the Lord. The breach has begun to turn. Going into this turn, there will be pressure. There will be resistance. However, that's capitalized, says the Lord. Put your mind to diligently work and to diligently seek me. That's capitalized, meaning the Lord, the Lord your God. For I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, you are seeing the rumblings, my children, just the rumblings, the tremors before the shaking, before the turn, for you have just entered a big turn that's capitalized. For I, the Lord your God, have begun to raise a standard in your nation. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. That standard has indeed begun. And those I have anointed in leadership will have to come up to this standard if they intend for me, the Lord your God, to bless their leadership. For they will not lead if they do not come in alignment with this standard, says the Lord. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, as you have rejected me, O oh, you wicked leaders, you wicked governors, those in the house, as you have rejected me, that's capitalized, and used, that's capitalized, my name for your furtherance, that's capitalized. So I, the Lord, have now rejected you, that's capitalized. You shall see this in the Northeast, says the Lord. You shall see this on the West Coast, says the Lord. You shall see this towards the middle of your nation. For I, the Lord, have rejected them. They can warm that seat all they want. For that seat will throw them down, says the Lord. It is coming. It is not over, says the Lord, for they have taken what is not theirs. They have attempted to usurp. They have utilized devious methods to cause a mirage and illusion that they are the rightful owners of those seats. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. It has merely begun to form a little, and then it shall grow. It shall expand, and at my capital word, you shall see the drought end, the rain come, and that is the indication of another changing of the guard, says the Lord. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, the Mounties in Canada, just watch, for the seats of those leaders have begun to shake. O Canada, cry out to me, the Lord of hosts, King of kings, for the winds of change have begun to blow into your nation, and leaders will be unseated in unusual ways. You shall hear them say, this is so unusual. How could this be? For my ways, that's capitalized, are higher than your ways, and my capital thoughts higher than your thoughts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, there shall be paths carved to leadership. Unexpected, says the Lord. You shall see the unexpected. You shall see sudden shifts, uncoverings that will carve paths to leadership that were not seen before. For I, the Lord, that's capitalized, for I, the Lord your God, am appointing the Zerubbabels in this hour, governors who will raise a standard and hold that standard that I, the Lord, have begun to raise. A cry shall come out of the house, a cry shall come out of the house, says the Lord, for that has just begun, just begun, he's saying, to turn, says the Lord. A process indeed, says the Lord, a process indeed has gone forth, and I, the Lord, shall snatch the most coveted seats away from the ones who think, that's capitalized, they are secure, says the Lord. Oh, you think in your flesh you are so you are secure, says the Lord, that you have manipulated events and circumstances to secure such a seat. However, says the Lord, your seats are far from secure, and they shall be snatched from you for what has been hidden away will be brought out into the open. What has been stolen shall be stolen from them. The thieves shall be robbed themselves, says the Lord. 
All for 30 pieces of silver, you have brought condemnation on your soul, heaping coals upon your lives. And says the Lord of hosts, I am going back and beginning a rectification and a realignment of what came out of joint as the millennium turned and the 2000 on your clock begun. I am going back, says the Lord. I am rectifying and reordering what has caused a chain reaction through the years to what you see before you. Serve me in the land of captivity, for I am your deliverer, your strong tower. I am an ever-present help in times of trouble. The elections are not your salvation, says the Lord. I, the Lord, am your deliverer in this. I raise leaders up and I bring them down, says the Lord. My plan is unfolding and it will take great faith of the people to look beyond what they see, to speak in faith what they see beyond the circumstance, to declare it boldly as this breach has begun to turn and the repairs shall begin, says the Lord. Nehemiah was sent of me, that's capitalized, to repair the wall, the breach, and the gate. He was appointed by me, that's capitalized, the Lord his God, to rebuild what was rubble, what others saw as not worth the effort. He saw beyond the rubble and the brokenness and has a mind to work and rebuild. And no matter the threats and the plots against him, he diligently continued. And as that happened, I, the Lord, brought the plans of the wicked to nothing and frustrated them that they could not execute their plots. I, the Lord, am calling the Nehemiahs, the Zerubbabels, the Ezras, forth to encourage the people, to rally them, to teach them how to diligently work, to run the race, to press toward the mark of the high calling. Come higher with me, my children, and you shall see how I see your nation. For I go beyond what man would deem intelligence. I go beyond intellect. I go beyond what you see before your face. For I am God and there is no other. That's capitalized. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, O oh, you leaders who have been stolen from, who have been ostracized, who have been smeared, all capitals here, stop trying to do this in your own strength. Stop trying to vindicate yourself in your own strength. Close your mouth and let me, the Lord, speak for you. Humble yourselves before me and submit. Do not fight the yoke for some things have been unnecessarily prolonged, says the Lord. I am, that's capitalized, says the Lord, I am, that's capitalized, and I will, that's capitalized, have my way, says the Lord. However, this is a process. The people must learn. The church must learn, that's capitalized, to not just sit there and turn a blind eye to wickedness, to what is unholy. They slink back as if they have no authority. They teach the people to ignore, and it snuffs out their light. However, I, the Lord, am going to reignite the fire in the church. I am going to give them a desire to operate in that authority. However, there must be a changing of the guard. Uh, there must be a changing of the guard first. For too many leaders doing deeds in the darkness and then speaking about the light as if they know me, that's capitalized. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you, that's capitalized. Too much intermixing what is not of me, that's capitalized, with what is of the filth, what is not of me, with what is of the filth of this world, and it has created a gross concoction that is causing brambles in the souls of the people. Get the speck of dust out of your own eye before you can remove the log from your neighbor's eye, says the Lord. However, many of you have logs in both eyes and have filled yourselves with intoxications of the enemy that are not of me, that's capitalized, and I, the Lord, am bringing rectification and a hard adjustment to the church as the church should speak boldly the word of God they should be utilizing the sword of the spirit. They should not be welcoming the ways of Moab and the ways of Sodom into my house, says the Lord. That's capitalized. And this will change suddenly, says the Lord. A sudden gust of wind will knock much out of my house. That's capitalized. That does not belong. Watch and see, says the Lord, for it is almost upon you. The hour has almost come. And says the spirit of the Lord this day. 
a collapse in Europe across multiple countries, for there is a bearing down on Europe, and the leaders are desperate, and fools will rush in and make deals with devils that will oppress the people. However, there shall be a light out of Europe. A nation shall raise up a leader that fears the Lord, and that leader will be a beacon of light, a light on a hill that other countries shall take notice of, and some will follow suit. For Europe is in danger of a deep freeze on many fronts, says the Lord. Do not allow the enemy to become your salvation. For there is a way, says the Lord, to circumvent the clamps that have been put upon you. The leaders who look to me will see it. That's capitalized. For it is unusual, but it is the way to circumvent in this hour. Poles, P-O-L-E-S, shall arise in Europe. A ski, S-K-I, shall arise in leadership. Now, I don't know if uh, S-K-I is in this person's name or if it if ski is a play on words and their last name may have to do with something that has to do with skiing. But he says, a ski shall arise in leadership. I, the Lord, have called them and appointed them for such a time. He's talking about, I believe, in Europe. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, Take courage. Do not allow hopelessness to set in now for the great turn and the great push has begun. A blow to the head for one in high office. Just watch for it shall rattle the hub. And says the Lord of hosts, I am turning you, my children, as well. A change in direction. While some are heading right for Sodom, as Lot so headed to the way of sin, those I have truly anointed, I am changing their direction. You shall go the way of the Lord. You shall see gates open, says the Lord. You shall see the strongholds come down. You shall see promotion in this hour and favor. For the favor was upon Abraham, says the Lord, not Lot. And who is who shall be made clear as you go forth into a new arena. For I have trained you well for this hour. I, the Lord, have equipped you. I, the Lord, have positioned you. And you shall go forth for my glory, knowing, my children, that I, the Lord, am with you even until the end of the age. And your path is becoming straight, while those who have mixed tonics, their path they have entered is jagged and crooked. I am your comforter. I am your father. And I am instructing you. Open your ears to listen to what the Spirit has to say. For I, the Lord, say it is a new day for you. The sun, capitalized S-O-N, is on the horizon after a very dark season. The light has just begun to break forth. Receive it as I, the Lord, raise a banner in your lives and in this nation. For it is mine to give. It is not the enemies to take. And another ruling is coming from the judges I have anointed that will be historic and turn the breach even more. Watch, it is coming. Rejoice this day, for I have made it, and know that I am on the throne. Thus says the Lord of hosts in the name of Jesus Christ, who sits at my capital right hand. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. That's where this word ends. I could feel the power in that word as I was reading it. Praise the Lord. This will be up on the blog. Now, I'm going to talk about some things that I have seen go on. I'm just going to show you a map of New York. I'm going to show you a map of New York. This is New York, and it is almost all red. The pink areas are still being counted and leaning red including Long Island. All of Long Island right now is leaning red. So you tell me when the state is almost all red, you tell me. So I'm going to tell you this. The person that thinks they won in New York as governor, the Lord has rejected them as governor. When God rejected Saul, Saul stayed in that seat a little longer while David was coming. So all it is, is a seat warmer right now, but the Lord has rejected this person as governor. The person that thinks they won, 
The person that declared victory in New York, the Lord has rejected them as governor. And those four terms will not be fully fulfilled. And I am telling you, New York and California are connected. And this is why the Lord's talking about you've just begun to enter. The breach has just begun to be turned. Because look at this map. This is the beginning of the turn. This is the beginning of it right here. Right here. That's the beginning. If we look at the nation, I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to pull it up live. It would be nice if I went on Wi-Fi on my phone, wouldn't it? Because this is worth showing. I want to show you something. Can, can we see this or no? I may have to pull this one up on the, yeah. I'm going to pull this up for us to see. Live. And this is updated from the eight, the Associated Press. And this is updated in real time. Um, okay. All right, ready? I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen and show you what I'm talking about. Look at that. Look at the country right now. I just want you to take a good look at this map. And this is for the race in the house, okay? Take a good look at this map. And take a good look at the colors. This is the beginning of the turn of the breach. This is the beginning of it. You need to read the book of Nehemiah right now. You need to read Nehemiah. Nehemiah, under Cyrus, I believe it was, had to go to diligently work to repair what was rubble. But look at that map. This is real time from the Associated Press. So don't think God is not at work, but he's holding them to a standard that are coming in and they're going to have to come up to his standard. Governors, he has raised a high standard for governors. Neither they come up to that standard or they're going to fall. They are going to tumble. So what I'm saying is do not lose hope right now because certain things happened in certain states. The breach has begun to turn. When a doctor is to go in and turn a breached baby, right? And I said this on the last broadcast I did when I talked about this the day, November 8th, that this was going on. The doctor has to go in and the doctor can't do this very fast, right? The doctor has to kind of very gingerly and gently begin to turn the baby without hurting the baby to get the baby in the right position to be birthed. The Lord has gone in and he's begun to turn the breach. He's begun to repair. We have just entered this big turn. And when you enter a turn initially, right? You haven't hit the turn yet. You're entering it. So you're still kind of going what you deem is straight and then whoop, it turns. So we have entered that turn. This is not over. And in the coming year, you're going to see that. You're going to see that. Because things are going to be challenged. Things are going to be challenged. People think they have won their seats. And they haven't won them fair and square. And it's going to be challenged. And those seats are going to be shaken. And those seats are going to be ripped out from under them where you're going to see these falls happen. These falls are going to happen publicly. Disgrace. Shameful. 
And the Lord is utilizing some people right now to raise a standard. Zerubbabel's in this nation to raise a standard. DeSantis is one of them. Whether he realizes it or not, the Lord is utilizing him to raise a standard. And the governors are going to have to come up to that standard. The Senate, the House, have to come up to that standard. The highest seat in the land is going to have to come up to that standard or fall. This is the beginning of the raising of a standard. And when a standard is raised, it stops the onslaught. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him and stop it. This is what happened on November 8th. The onslaught was stopped. Who had the majority lost it. They no longer have full control because that standard is now being raised in this nation. And this is where the people of God have to put their mind to work and diligently work. The Lord said it's going to take great faith to understand what he's doing right now. Do not turn elections into a demigod. God raises leaders up and he brings them down. And sometimes leaders get in falsely. And when God rejected Saul, Saul lingered in that seat a little longer, didn't he? Till he fell. The Davids are being prepared. The Zerubbabels are in place. The breach has begun to turn. And the Lord is raising them up. And they're going to help keep that standard up. And keep that standard raised. These Zerubbabels that God is raising up right now. Some people who think they've won. And they've gotten their seat. And they don't deserve that seat. Are not going to be in that seat for long. They're going to be forced to step down. That is coming in the new year. That is coming. You may even see one before the end of the year. You may. See, when the Jews fought and Moses had to hold up his hands, right? He had Aaron on one side, right? And he had another on the left. And they were helping to keep that standard up. Because Moses was helping keep that standard up while the Jews fought. So they would have victory. These Zerubbabels are there to keep the standard up. And they're going to need people to help them hold their arms up while they keep this standard up. While they stand staunch in it. While they stand in the face of it. And I'm going to tell you this. Leaders who may be brought back are going to have to be brought up to God's standard now to come back. God expects a standard and he expects them to have eyes to see and ears to hear and a mouth that's under control. God is expecting that right now. This is the standard. And we need to understand that. God is raising a standard. I don't care who the leader is. They're going to have to come up to God's standard now. I don't care who it is. They have to come up to that. Because God has a plan and things have to be differently done over the next two years than they were done in the past. But these Zerubbabels right now are a cornerstone of this, are a key of this right now. These incredible men and women that are being raised up as governors that are going to keep that standard up to help stop that onslaught. The people with a pure heart that have just been voted in to the house are going to help keep that standard up. And they're going to encourage the people, the Ezra's, right? The Nehemiah's are going to encourage the people to diligently work and stay the course because the Lord thy God is with you. Even though it may not look it, even though 
There's a bit of captivity going on. God is greater than that. His people are beyond that. The Lord thy God is with you. And we need to understand that. That we're going forth with this standard, with the Lord with us, with the Lord with these governors, with the Lord rejecting leaders, rejecting governors, rejecting those in the highest seat in the land, rejecting the highest secretaries. God has rejected them. That decree has gone forth in the spirit. Now, you have to watch it transpire in the natural. You have to watch it transpire in the natural. They did not learn from the falls of the former, especially with New York and California. You have not learned. Michigan, you have not learned. Your days are number two, O oh, leaders of Michigan. Your days are numbered. And you will leave your seat in shame for what you have sowed, for you are reaping tares in this time. You are reaping tares. And we have to understand this, that God does not submit to man and he does not submit to our plan how we want things to go. Because sometimes how we want things to go, we, we think it's great, we think it's a great picture, and then it's enacted and it's like, boy, did that go... This is why God's ways are higher than our ways. He knows when people should come back, if they should come back, when they should come back, in what position they should come back, how they should come back, when they should be raised up, what position they should be in, when they're ready, when they're ready to listen, when they're ready to submit. He knows these things and these matters of the heart that we don't. And the ones raising a standard right now are prepared to submit under the yoke of God. And there are others that are still wrestling with God that need to understand his yoke is better. You don't make deals with devils and think something good for you is going to come out of that. Because tears will ultimately come. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come to give us life and life more abundant. So uh, this election was about a standard beginning to be raised in this nation. This is why I never heard the word red wave come out of my mouth. Because this is about the raising of a standard. And right now, this nation has entered, just begun to enter the turn. That's it. Just begun to enter the turn. And we're going to see a lot of twists in that turn as the Lord brings this to pass and he brings his plan to pass. Because his plan is the most important in it. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's looking at this from a whole different viewpoint than we are. He's looking at who's ready and who's not. Who's under the yoke and who's not. Who's holding up the standard and who's not. He's looking at all this. But he's seeing it from a very different perspective than we are. So we're seeing the breach begin to turn. We're seeing the Nehemiahs and the Zerubbabels and Ezra's come forth. And, and those that want to plan and plot, in fact, I'm going to go to Nehemiah chapter four to end with this because it's good to go to the word. Let's find it. Let's find it. Nehemiah chapter 4. Here it is. Okay. There's Ezra. All right, let's see here. You add Tobiah, 
and Sanballat and the Arabians and the Ammonites that were mocking them and that had plans to harm them and stop the build. So you had the Tobias and the Sanballats and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites that were upset that the breaches were being repaired, the wall was being rebuilt, the gates were being repaired, and they conspired to come and fight against them to stop the work. And Nehemiah says, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night. Set a watch against them day and night. Because they were going to catch them then and what they were going and what they were planning. Now, there is another part here where it says the Lord frustrated. Here it is. It's uh, Nehemiah 4, chapter 15. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us. And God had brought their counsel to naught or to nothing that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. They tried to stop the work by writing deceitful letters to leaders to stop it. But God brought their counsel to nothing. God will bring their counsel to nothing. The counsel of the wicked, the counsel of those who want to stop the work, the counsel of those who want to interfere with the Nehemiahs and the Zerubbabels and the Ezra's, he will bring their counsel to nothing. He will bring their counsel to nothing. But this is a time to come humbly and submit to the Lord for leaders. This is not a time to play around. This is not a time to... Um, to shoot off at the mouth. Uh, this is a time to allow the Lord to speak for you and to tell you what you ought to speak. This is what time it is. And we just need to keep that in mind. We need to pray for our leaders and we need to pray um, for those who they've cast lots for. They have cast lots when it comes to DeSantis as well. Those lots have been cast. That will not come to fruition, but those lots have been cast. Um, but this is the time to have to diligently work and see through the eyes of great faith what the Lord is doing. Ask him to show you through his eyes what he's doing. And you may see things from a whole new perspective in this nation, what is happening. So ask him through the eyes of faith. And I believe much is going to be uncovered in New York. That is coming. That is coming. I am in New York. I am watching this closely, but much is going to be uncovered. Because God knows every hiding place. He knows every trick. He knows every thievery. He knows every lie. He knows how things were executed. He knows what's going on. And it will, their nakedness will be exposed. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit right now. Their nakedness will be exposed. He's going to lift their skirts above their heads and expose their nakedness. And I believe that is from Isaiah, that verse. So all glory be to God. Praise the Lord. We're at 44 minutes right now. I think this is where we are going to end for tonight. Um, I just uh, want to thank everyone for tuning in uh, and for just being a blessing to us and to our team. Thank you to our moderators for being a blessing to us. Thank you to our team for being such a blessing to us. Um, we are very grateful for that. We have begun uh, some construction to build the new sanctuary. So this is to pray for us as we have to um, deal with permits and other things. Pray for us that we are not given a hard time uh, by the town and that we are able to successfully go forth because we have a mind to work and we have a mind to see uh, this accomplished. Uh, also wanted to tell you that 
we are still doing Mission Christ Love. So if you know someone or a family that has been through incredible circumstances, that has very dire circumstances, that is going through an incredibly, incredibly difficult time, you can email us at hello at arcofgrace-ministries.com um, and someone from our team will reach out to you and they're going to ask for some information so they can validate what's going on. And, and we would love to be able to try and help you. So we are doing mission Christ love. Also, you can email hello at arc of grace hyphen ministries.com. If you need the book, the believers authority or the triumphant church. So we have those books um, and we would be happy to bless you with them and get them into your hand. So you can email us here, hello at arcofgrace-ministries.com. And we also have prayers at arcofgrace-ministries.com to send your prayer requests. They do get prayed over and you can always email us if you need prayer. It's already dark out. Oh, I don't like that it's getting dark out early. Oh my goodness, but it, this is change. This is the season of change, right? It's a changing of the it's a changing of the seasons. We're seeing a changing of the guards. Uh, so we are going to be going up on new platforms too. So we will announce, but we are going to be going up on Brighteon. Um, we're going to be going up, I believe, on BitChute. We do have a TikTok. So if we actually, if you'd like to see me spinning a basketball on my finger and that unique talent that I somehow developed. As a child that stayed with me through adulthood, it is at ARK, A-R-K of Grace Ministries on TikTok. So we do shorts of the animals there and words and I'm spinning a ball on my finger is the latest. So once again on TikTok, it's at ARK, A-R-K of Grace Ministries is our screen handle. But we will be announcing as we go up on these new platforms uh, so you can easily find us and you can watch on those as well. Uh, we're thrilled that Brighteon is welcoming us onto their platform. Whoa, there she goes. There goes, that was Chet. I thought that was Grace for a minute. And like I said, we will announce as we go up on these platforms. Um, we have some guests that are going to be coming on in the coming weeks as well. We have coming on, I think it is... Let me see here. The 21st of November, 4 p.m. on Ark of Grace. This is an account you have to hear. Um, it is about Abby's journey to heaven, this little girl. Uh, they wrote a book, actually, that they recently released. Uh, we, have ha we have interviewed her before on other platforms. And it is an incredible account what this little girl went through. Uh, and so her mom is going to be joining us to tell this account. I'm telling you, you're going to be crying by the end of this account and what happened. That is going to be Monday, November 21st at 4 p.m. We will announce that. And then Monday, November 14th at 7 p.m. is the first broadcast of Grace Out Loud here on Ark of Grace. So don't miss that either. Okay, we will, of course, make announcements for all of this. Also, we're just going to share a couple. If you go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARC, you can save up to 66% off all my pillow products. They are so much more than just pillows. They make amazing gifts. They have amazing pet beds, bathrobes. Their slippers are incredible. Uh, and so you can use promo code ARC, and it can save you quite a bit on your purchases. Also... Let's see here what who we can uh, who we can put up. This is Spot and Tango. This is one of the dog foods we use here at the sanctuary for our animal uh, for our animals. And if you use promo code Ark of Grace, you get fifty percent off your first order. It is fresh food, and they have fresh freeze dried food uh, that has actual cranberries in it and string beans. And Missy has the shiniest coat. Um, that the groomer has ever seen. Uh, and one of the reasons is because we have her on this food. Feeding your pets good food ultimately saves on vet bills. One of the keys and foundations of your vet's health, of your, of your pet's health is the food you feed them. So if you go to spotandtango.com, you use our promo code ARC of Grace, you'll get 50% off your first order. 
And we'll bring Missy up here to show you. So hopefully Missy can come up when uh, Molly comes up with us and uh, we can uh, we can just have a lot of the pets in the room at the same time uh, and just have ourselves a good old time with the animals at the ark. So God bless everybody. Grace says, God bless you. There she is. She's right there. Keep the faith. We love you. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six. Be in your word every day. This is for your soul. This is what prospers your soul. This is what grows us to hear the voice of the Lord is the word. Be in your word every day. And we will announce when we will be back on. We will be back on soon. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. You have a wonderful weekend. If anything, I will go live. If anything happens, if I hear anything, I absolutely will go live. Oh, gosh. Grace is up there, which means she's chasing Chet. This is how we're ending. The two of them bickering. And there goes Chet. There he goes. <laughs> And she laughs at him. She jumps in his face and she laughs at him. And this is what I deal with all the time with the two of them. Mommy's going to get you, Chet. Here. You want to say goodbye to everyone? Here. All right. Say, keep the faith, everyone. Forgive Grace for chasing me. God bless you. We love you. Keep the faith. Have a wonderful evening.